Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to bring you a very important update on VeChain. Folks, when do we ever not bring you very important updates? The correct answer is never, because look, I was saying we were in this wedge here, this green uh, support line and this red resistance line was gonna be very important. Whatever way we broke out of it, uh, we were lucky to trend in that direction for quite some time. And look, we had a bearish fake out, which I explained VeChain loves to do. VeChain loves to have bearish fake outs. And then we broke above the wedge and pumped Folks, if you had been following us back from the original breakout point from VeChain's macro ascending triangle, you could have been up on VeChain. Let's see how much. Eh, just over 38%. So, folks, excuse me. A like, subscribe, comment, share. Hit that bell icon notified of new uploads. Now, there's so many important things to talk about here. Uh, <laughs> now, I know there's a lot of lines, but don't you worry. I'm going to talk about the important ones that you need to be aware of. Now, before we really delve into the TA here, I just want to right off the bat mention what I believe is the single most important support level for VeChain. That being the 200 EMA on the 6 hour. It has constantly been the rock bed of support for VeChain the last few months. Look here. Pumped, dumped. Found support on the 200 EMA, found support on the 200 EMA, found support on the 200 EMA. Even if we zoom back further, where did we find support every time we pumped and dumped? The 200 EMA on the 6 hour. Personally, folks, if and when VeChain ever falls back down to the 200 EMA on the 6 hour, that's where I'm, I'm going to be looking to place my buy orders because look how perfectly it's constantly, constantly been acting as support. Now, again, Let's say for whatever reason, whatever it is that, let's say we fall back down and retest it, no guarantee that it'll act as support, but it has historically been acting as amazing support. And if you would have just placed your buy orders every time uh, we fell the 200 email on the six hour, I mean, you'd been up on VeChain almost like the, the entire time. So folks, uh, very important, very critical level uh, for VeChain. And I, I placed a green support zone here because uh, the original breakout from the macro ascending triangle slash broadening channel was just above 355. So all this region here, you know, from 355 to really the 200 EMA on the 6 hour, I think will act as uh, important support for VeChain if and when we break down. So, folks, we were in this wedge here. We broke out bullishly. We're up against one of our uh, 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 resistance levels that I had drawn from, from previous videos. So we hit resistance exactly as predicted, uh, exactly where predicted, to be honest. And so to see bullish continuation, we need to see VeChain get above and hold 5-4. Once we can get above and hold 5-4, I think we're, that is when we're very likely to see bullish continuation, ta tackle these resi resistance levels, all-time highs, and then enter price discovery. I think our next major impulse after ta uh, uh, price uh, all-time highs here um, is probably $0.06 cents for VeChain. So let's take a look at our indicators to try to get a sense of what VeChain is doing here in the short term. Now let's begin by looking at the daily. So daily looks strong for vchain we may have a bullish crossover on the daily macd if and when that happens that is a very big deal very likely to see bullish continuation if we get that we did macd which acts typically acts as a leading indicator on the regular macd bullish crossover on the way up you can see how as soon as we have the bullish crossover on the weighted macd right after is when the histogram started moving up that's why the weighted macd i love pairing the two together because the weighted macd will typically uh, act as leading indicator on well it almost always yeah there's no scenario in which it doesn't it acts as a leading indicator on the macd so stochastic our side great for understanding shifts in trend in trends but not the extent to the shift in the trend just that the shift is occurring so see once we had the bullish crossover right here right here that's as soon as we took off and we tried to have a bearish crossover we couldn't we took off right there is when we touched which right about here and that's exactly when we uh, broke up bullishly so folks looking at the stochastic good for understanding shifts and trends on the larger time frames can be very very telling now Let's look at the RSI here. So RSI macro, lower highs and lower lows. And then while these lines aren't quite lined up correctly, uh, once we move over to the shorter time frames, you'll see what I'm trying to draw there. So, um, you know, daily looks, you know, we see some signs of some strength. Uh, RSI in a macro downtrend, although having a micro uptrend here in the short term. And then looking at the 12 hour, 12 hour, see, then on the 12 hour, that strength is not very convincing. 12 hours, we're going to see some weakness. Histogram going down. Weighted MACD curving down. Seems to want to have a bearish crossover. Stochastic RSI in the overbought regions having a bearish crossover. Looking like it's ready to have a leg down. Regular RSI, you know, um, in, in, in a micro uptrend. So, but we're having a bit of a leg down for the moment. So ultimately, 12 hour does look bullish. Now, 
six hour, six hour a continuation. See, histogram taken down. Weighted MACD bearish crossover. Stochastic RSI bearish crossover on the way down. Now let's look here at the RSI, and this is kind of what what I wanted to uh, to look at here. So the RSI is great for understanding when we could possibly have shifts and trends. So see, you can even draw resistance lines here in the RSI. And as soon as we broke above the RSI here, which coincides with this price in, price action, that is when we took off and had this, this uh, how much of an impulse did we have here? We had oof, like a 30% impulse once the RSI broke above this uh, resistance level here based off these two peaks. So it, you can you can draw a resistance support and, resi and resistance lines on the RSI that could be very helpful for understanding uh, when a breakout and a breakdown and a rejection or, or we're, we're finding support uh, could be likely to occur. So when we see that next leg up with VeChain, I think is once we get up above this red resistance sign here on the RSI. So whenever we can get above that, I think that is when we have you know the uh, the bullish continuation that we're looking for so you know perhaps something like this is possible right where then we you know, something like that and uh whenever it is that we break down from uh, or sorry break above that red line i think is when we see bullish continuation so let's keep on looking here see what's going down six hour does look weak i hope i didn't take too much time to kind of give you guys an rsi lesson there so now the two hour we're starting to see some strength actually if we go to the one hour i bet you would probably be a uh, more pronounced yeah, okay, so looking at the one hour here, so the shorter time frames is we, is where we are seeing that strength. And we are also getting a long way to the downside, finding support. Oh, folks, exactly one of my support regions, folks. It's almost like we know what we're doing. So um, very interesting to see that the lower time frames uh, are looking strong here. So yeah, bullish cross from the half hour. So let's just summarize a bit here uh daily does look bullish uh mid hourly time frames uh we're seeing some weakness but once you go to the shorter time frames shorter time frames seem to want to have a bit of a leg up in the short term here so i think you kind of understand where the next macro move is for vchain i think we just really need to see what way we break out of this range here we're currently there's a clusters of emas right below us um critical support level build up in volume this was a resistance level this 4645 region was constantly acting as resistance once we broke above previous resistance turns into support and now we're getting rejected off the 55 region so whatever way we break out of this tight range here i think we're likely to trend in the direction of whatever way we break out if we break out above these regions i think we're, we're lucky to, uh, to continue to trend bullishly if we break down i think we're lucky to, to continue to uh, uh, trend down bearishly so those are some important things to look out for with the u.s dollar value of v-chain v -chain. but another thing to look out for folks oh god i i, I was mentioning this uh, days ago once i made the video saying v-chain broke out bullishly from this wedge saying if we got above this region here we're likely to see bullish continuation that's exactly what happened we found rejection exactly off the ranges previously predicted folks stay tuned with us like subscribe comment share hit that bell icon on the of new so we're stuck in between a, a resistance range if and when so what i think might happen is that vchain might go back go back down retest this green support line if we can solidify this green support line as uh support uh based off these wicks here if we can solidify that as support and if we can get above this level here once we get above this level i think that is when we see the next leg up for VeChain. So um, important chart to look at. So yeah, folks, as well, I don't have it uh, pulled up uh, quite just yet here, but another important chart uh, to look at is the Bitcoin uh, dominance chart. So let me pull it up real quick. All you have to do is uh, BTC.D for those. If you ever want to look up the uh, Bitcoin dominance chart, uh, just go to Trading View and look up BTC.D, and that's the Bitcoin dominance chart. Uh, that's the ticker. For those who don't know, I'm, yeah, I'm sure there's some newer people here. So the ticker is basically the, the abbreviation of, of what a security um, trades under. That's just the, the naming of it. Uh, so yeah, look, folks, looking at the daily here, for Bitcoin dominance. And just for those who don't know, I'm sure a lot of you could probably uh, say it along with me. I always say the same thing when referring to the Bitcoin dominance uh, because it's uh, I, I found out a way to concisely say it and get, get my point across quickly. So for those who don't know, Bitcoin dominance is the total value of Bitcoin in comparison to the total value of all cryptocurrency. Whenever it rises, all coins typically suffer. Whenever it falls, all coins typically benefit. So if we start to see a rally in Bitcoin dominance, that should tell you, say it along with me, that's going to place the dampers on the altcoins such as VeChain. If we see Bitcoin dominance start to fall, 
that should tell you the altcoins have more gas in their tank to continue pumping. I think once we see the real amazing uh, parabolic growth with the uh, with the altcoins specifically, is if and when we fall below the 60.5, I'd, I'd say about the 57.5 uh, percentile for Bitcoin dominance. Once we do, that is uh, that's when I think the the altcoins such as V Chain are truly truly flying. So important chart to look at to try and understand what the altcoins are going to do at any one time. As well, it is always important to follow Bitcoin and Ethereum. They lead the market. Whatever they do, the altcoins such as V Chain will follow suit. So another very interesting thing as well. So. I'm actually going to pull it up here. Something I realized quite long ago, and I think for the newer people uh, seeing this um, could be helpful. A lot of the time, especially in cryptocurrency, we're really not trading a specific project. Folks, you're actually trading a market. It is uncanny how oftentimes I look at different charts and they look the exact same. Like, look at look at this here on, on CoinGecko here, Bitcoin and Ethereum. L look how un uncanny it is. They look so, so similar. There's just a slight, uh, slight variations in, in the different projects. See, look at this macro uptrend, macro uptrend. See, look how similar all these different projects look. You, like they're, they're obviously uh, variations in some projects vary more than others in, in their price structure. But so often you'll see extremely, extremely similar uh, price action and price structure all throughout different projects in different niches. Why is this? Well, it's because of Bitcoin and Ethereum. They have a large influence on the market. They lead the market. See, take a look. Look how similar these, these four different projects, Hubei, Tezos, NEO, and FTX, look how similar their price action looks. Folks, you're not trading a project. You're trading a market. There's just variations, and, the, and there's, uh, there's uh, <laughs> variations to the degree in which different coins vary, but ultimately, we're really trading a market here. Uh, and, and you know, some <laughs> I don't want to keep you saying, they do vary a lot. And, and that variation, uh, you know, some coins will, some projects will, will pump more than others, some consolidate more than others. And so there are differences between all of them. But ultimately speaking, we're it's, it's really uncanny how similar different projects price structure looks. We're really trading a market, not any one project in particular. It's just the projects in particular that have, you know, their, uh, their intricacies and, and their specific variations and, you know, their specific, uh, you know, news and, and needs events and, and fundamentals and, and so that's why we get the, the variation through the different projects but bitcoin and ethereum my, my point is bitcoin and ethereum have a strong influence on the market so it's always important to understand what they do now over the long term i like to say between i think has a good chance of hitting 50 cents to a dollar because i like how that sounds but ultimately nobody knows for sure how high these coins are going to go i have no idea how these coins are going to go i believe it is much more helpful to look to scale out and look to sell out of long-term positions, more so based off time frames, less so based off type, uh, price targets. That's what I, that's the approach I'm taking. Again, you know, these videos are not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, you know, I, I like to say, you know, uh, you, you can extrapolate based on market caps. You know, if Bitcoin and Ethereum go to this, what could the altcoins do if, if they did this, you know, in the previous cycle? But ultimately, I think it's, again, time frames are much more relevant because I, over the long term, I think crypto is actually very easy to understand because, Crypto is driven, again, by Bitcoin, and Bitcoin in the boom and bust cycles, the bear in bull cycles, it's all driven because of the halvings. Roughly every four years, Bitcoin has a halving in which the amount of Bitcoin being produced uh, gets cut in half, which which is the whole thing that drives the cycles, the, the boom and bust cycles. And so according uh, to a chart broken down by Trading Chart, who does a very good job of breaking down the Bitcoin cycles, this next cycle top for Bitcoin is likely to happen the end of September 2021. And VeChain and the altcoins reached their peak uh, roughly a month after Bitcoin. So I think something similar has a very good chance of happening this time around. So point being, I'm going to be looking to scale out uh, come late third quarter, early fourth quarter, September, October, November. That's when I'll be looking to scale out fully out of all my positions. So whatever the market happens to give me, whether that's at 10 cents, 50 cents, a dollar, $10, whatever it happens to be, that's when I'll be looking to take profits. Uh, Again, based off time frames, not so much price targets because ultimately nobody knows for sure whatever the market happens to give you. So, folks, if you like this video, do not forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, hit that bell icon to be notified of new uploads. If anything interesting further happens, we will definitely be talking about it here. Join our Discord link for that down in the description. We talk to our Discord members regularly. We have very helpful resources. We talk about setups and trades and, and news events. If you like what we do, you want to support us. Become a Patreon member. Link for that down in the description. The patrons get access to our VIP Discord. Uh, they, they get access to the to the, um, to the low cap gems and 
extreme setups uh, before anyone else does and we have uh, very very helpful resources uh, posted there and we also have you know semi regular we're, we're going to try and make them more regular but typically on the weekends we have coin calls with all our discord members where we uh, answer questions break down the market you know talk about major news events happening uh, so guys join our discord lots of helpful stuff there so yeah folks thank you so much for watching until next time take care